What's going on YouTube? My name is Skilled87, and today's gonna be a really random video. I just wanna talk about a bunch of shit gaming related. You know, no direction in this video whatsoever. Just wanna talk about random stuff. Um, so, I'll talk about this first. Tell me you saw the God of War Ascension Super Bowl commercial. Wow! Like that, that commercial, I, I was straight up like, I, I was straight up like, just, 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 just take my fucking money. I kid you, just kid you not. I kid you not. I was so happy with that commercial. Why? Because I felt like, you know what? I may not be a big guy to work fan at all. Okay. I played every single one. And God of War has always been a solid game. Absolutely. You know, graphical monster, great combat. Greek mythology, you know, every fucking grown man with balls loves Greek mythology, and uh, I was like, all right, so I'm not the biggest God of War fan, and I know I'm going to buy the game regardless, because you know what, sometimes you got to get away from the RPGs, you got to get away from the FPS, and you just got to play a game where you can just, like, wreck shit, so I was like, all right, so God of War always gets the wrecking shit down really well, so I saw the commercial, and I'm like, wow, this is wonderful like you gotta see the commercial like it really captured such emotion and I really like these real life commercials because no matter how far technology comes no matter how far we get into you know with technology nothing no amount of technology I truly feel no amount of technology no amount of rendering will ever capture the same type of emotion a true human being can you know show portray project whatever and you know when oh, when his daughter just when he lifted her up, I really did not expect her to just turn to ash and cover his body. Then he fell to his knees, and you see the ash just puff in the air, and he grips his hands. And I'm just like, like I'm in shock. I'm like, whoa! This commercial is extreme as hell. It is it is a mixture of sad and, and fucking awesome at the same time. Like. You can tell with that commercial alone, even though there was absolutely no form of violence in it, except for the very end where everyone kind of charges at Kratos. Like, I, as a customer, a person, you know, a, per, a paying customer was like, whoa, like, I, I've just been convinced, like, $60 here. Like, that was convincing. Like, I was just like, wow, Sony, why don't you do that with every fucking game you sell? And so finally, Sony, like, you know, America gets some love outside of Japan. Japan getting all their wonderfully colored PS3s. We get a nice red PS3. And there's also another bundle. There's a white PS3 bundle, which is $300. And the red PS3 bundle with the, with the God of War shit is $350. Now, I, I'm really considering getting the red PS3. I kind of want it. it. Looks really good. <laughs> really stoked. Really, really psyched for the next God of War game. I've seen that commercial. That was such a wonderful commercial. If you have not seen it, I'm going to leave a link in the video description below. My friend will leave a link right here. Go watch it. It's wonderful. Okay. Some people saying that the Kratos actor, you know, his head's shaped a little oddly. I felt that they did a fine job. And it was just like, when you watch the commercial, you just, especially if you're a God of War fan, and you watch the commercial, you're going to be like this. Wow. You're, you're going to feel like they really thought about the fan base with that commercial. It was fantastic. And the music was boss. So, nothing. Let me see what I'm talk about. You got the big announcement. Sorry, I was eating earlier. You got the big Sony announcement, which is so obvious. I'm not even going to talk about that for like more than a minute. What is it? February 20th, whatever. Uh, a big announcement for Sony. I wonder what it is. You know, I, I, it couldn't possibly be PlayStation 4. Um, and here's hoping it's PlayStation 4 because I, I really am curious because I really kind of, I really, you know, I want a PS4 because I, I, love, I love PlayStation. So, uh, oh wow, I just like the, I did the most perfect great face. But, um, yeah, I am excited for PS4, granted of whatever I say in previous videos, because you guys take the internet way too seriously, and you take everything a video maker says way too seriously. Um, I will forever be pro Sony. I've always been pro Sony, and I really can't wait for PlayStation 4, and I can't wait to play the exclusives on PlayStation 4. Go, go, Uncharted, and Killzone in the future. But, um... So you got the announcement. I played a couple demos, okay? 
I played the Metal Gear Revengeance demo and I played the Death Space 3 demo. Now, I'm a humongous Metal Gear Solid fan, hence the reason why I'm called Acid Snake. It's based off of the PlayStation Portable card game, uh, Metal Gear Acid, which is a very trippy game. I love Raiden. I love Raiden because he was just as badass as Snake, but he was portrayed as a weakling. But in all reality, he's a fucking monster. And I, I, I got that feeling right from the get go. I was like, okay, this guy's a pretty boy. He got his long white hair, but something about him is really like, I can tell this guy's gonna blow up. And America saw too, and I, the world kind of disliked them. America disliked them. Japan loved them. And then Metal Gear Solid 4, all of a sudden America loves them because Raiden's like, almost, not quite there, almost as bad as a snake. And now, you know, his own game got announced, and I was really stoked. I'm like, yes, Platinum Games, yes. Um, they're really good at action games. So, you know, I went into this demo with an open mind. I did not go into this demo. When, I, when the demo started up, I was like, all right, all right, Hector. Do not expect graphics like Metal Gear Solid 4. Do not expect a soundtrack like Metal Gear Solid 4. Do not expect anything Hideo Kojima with this game. Expect a Platinum Games action experience, which I totally went into thinking. I was like, all right, Platinum Games, action game, right in, let's do this. So, playing the game, I beat the demo, and I was like this. Platinum Games, you let me down. You see... The environments were so fucking bland and boring. And then, outside of Raiden, his partners, I feel like I was watching a really shitty anime when they were all talking to each other. I feel like I was watching a really shitty anime. The voice acting was... Ugh! Uh, the combat was cool, but the square and triangle and shit, but Blade Mode was... It felt utterly fucking awkward. Blade Mode felt like a chore to use, and it felt useless when you when, when you fought the metal gears and you fought the final boss i kid you not i was i really wasn't all that excited and this upsets the shit out of me because i'm a big riding fan i, I really dig riding and i love Metal Gear solid so i'm like uh platinum games because platinum games they got they have vanquish on the belt vanquish was amazing they have bayonetta bayonetta was amazing and i'm thinking all right so they're making Metal Gear vengeance and maybe it's me Maybe I'm expecting too much. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe the demo just, it didn't choose the right level, but in all reality, I felt like the game just, it was just bland. And Blade Mode, which is supposed to be like the fucking, the heart and soul of the game, I just felt that that was like, meh. So I was like, all right, so let me not, let me let me get off the hype train for this game, and you know, I'm, I'm still going to buy it. Because I, you know, I, I love me, you know, I need me an action game or two. So, uh, the next game I played was Dead Space. I played the Dead Space demo. And I am a huge Dead Space fan. I started playing Dead Space 1 late. I played like a year after it came out, like a dumbass, because I didn't really know about its existence. And then I played Dead Space 2, which was amazing. Dead Space 2 had the environment, the enemies, and I fucking love the concept of playing a horror game with tools and not guns. Tools. To dismember your enemies. I loved it. Everything about Dead Space 2 was phenomenal. Okay, I actually did not have almost any complaints about the game. Except the multiplayer was... It wasn't even bad multiplayer. It was just tacked on. So, in Dead Space 3, you, you got the drop-in co-op concept. And, um... Yeah, I, I feel the drop-in co-op concept's awesome. Because you just jump in, jump out. It doesn't really interrupt the game at all. And, uh, you know, you can experience the game with a friend. And if you play by yourself, it's actually supposed to be a different game. In terms of, you know, dialogue and presentation and video so it's like you're playing two games in one so I'm playing the demo and I had a couple complaints but nothing that's gonna sway or make me doubt the game at all but this snow concept is fucking gay already this snow shit I'm tired of fucking snow okay it's a horror game Dead Space was horror and granted you know these you know I don't get freaked out at all by playing horror games horror games have no effect on me but I'd appreciate a horror setting because when I played Dead Space 2 there was a couple moments I was like, yeah, yeah, like I was like, whoa, shit, fuck, like, you know, I need that, I need that, I need more of that, and this Space 3, I didn't have a single one of those, okay, it's fucking, you're out in the snow, and it's, the snow effects really suck dick, they're horrible as shit, 
the, all the brightness takes away from what Dead Space is supposed to be about. Eerie environments and dismemberments. And you fucking two can sands flying around in the snow and shit. I'm just like, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. Hopefully the majority of this game is not in the goddamn, you know, open environment where there's wonderful trees and sun. I do not want that. I want dark corridors and, and stuff. Okay. So, um. Gears of War Judgment. I've been like trolling the shit out of people in the Gears of War Judgment videos. I'm looking at the Gears of War Judgment videos. And I'm pretty goddamn excited. Gears of War Judgment gonna have some free for all. The game looks faster paced. Some people talking about, oh, you put free for all in Gears of War. This ain't Call of Duty. What the fuck are you talking about? Call of Duty did not introduce free for all at all. Quake. Doom. Those games ring a bell? I don't understand what the hell you Gears of War fans are complaining about. All they're doing is giving you more modes to play. You have free for all mode, which the I feel is a very skill skill based mode. Where you're by yourself, every man's with himself, and it's just a really hectic mode. You got the the team fortress in a sense concept where everyone has like a role now. Added you know adding a little flavor to your game. I don't see what's wrong. I'm watching all these gameplay videos. I'm just like, ah, this game looks fucking awesome. I don't see, I'm not seeing nothing wrong in these gameplay trails at all. The game's faster. This is one thing I don't know about Gears of War. It's always been a slow game about bouncing from wall to wall. And that's cool. The bouncing of the wall to wall. There is a very hard learning curve for Gears of War. And I will, I will never doubt that Gears of War is a hard game. But from these trailers, there's nothing really changing that formula. There's just more. There's more chaotic. So I don't understand what you're complaining about. So, you know, any hardcore Gears of War fan, enlighten me, please. Convince me as to why you think Gears of War Judgment sucks because I don't see nothing wrong with the game. I think it's going to be a step in the right direction for the franchise. This protein shake tastes like shit. Wow. But, um, let me see. I didn't pick up... How is it? Nuni? Nuni, Uni? Nini? Nuniani? Wrath of the White Witch? It's a JRPG. And uh, the last JRPG I played was Tales of Graces F, which I felt was fucking horrendous. It was such a bad game. Maybe because I played the JRPGs when I was younger, and I didn't really realize how shitty voice acting typically is in JRPGs. And so when I played Tales of Graces F, I was so mindfucked about how bad the game's voice acting was, and how everyone sounds like they're, like, soulless, basically. So... Yeah, what else can I talk about? Ugh. Hold on. Give me one second. Oh, yeah. I actually got to talk about this. Two things. One. I don't have a. I don't have the, the new Game Boy. I kind of really want one. I am so down with Pokemon. So I really want Pokemon... Um, what is it? X and Y. But they got a fucking Fire Emblem game coming out for the 3DS. And the only thing that's upsetting me with the bundle, and I really want the bundle. I want that blue fucking Fire Emblem 3DS. It's not the XL 3DS. It's it's the bitch made one, the previous one. So I'm kind of upset with that. So I'm, I'm on the fence, but should I buy a 3DS? Yes or no? To play basically Fire Emblem and Pokemon X and Y. And if you have a problem with me playing Pokemon... You had no childhood, because Pokemon's amazing. Um, oh yeah, and last but no, two, two more things, two more things, two more things, two more things. I have not played a Crisis 3 beta yet, because I've been watching a lot of gameplay footage on it, multiplayer-wise. And the multiplayer is making the same fucking mistake that Crisis 2 did. What is with developers including a form of fucking stealth in multiplayer? Why? Why do developers do that? Why? Stop giving weak players tools to use against strong players because strong players utilize tools that were meant to be used against them to fuck with everyone else. That's why I stopped playing Killzone 3 online. Because every two seconds in Killzone 3, some dude just came out of nowhere flashing like, oh, cloak, surprise, motherfucker, boom. And that's just gay as fuck. I don't mind dying. I don't care about getting shot in the back. 
The one thing that annoys everyone in this world is when someone just magically fucking appears in front of you. Oh, uh, some fucking James Bond cloak shit. And go, boom, in your face. So they got the cloaking shit back in Crisis 3. And I'm like, why? In Crisis 2. Which I was good as fuck at. I'm playing, I have a positive win-loss and kill-death ratio in Crisis 2 on the Xbox 360. And I abused the living shit out of cloaking and armor ability. And people are going to say, well, that's part of the game. It's part of the game. I don't care if it's part of the game. Take it out of multiplayer and add other things to multiplayer. Make multiplayer unique. Leave the you know leave the camouflage shit in you know single player. That's cool. That's fucking awesome. Let profit do his thing. But a multiplayer, do not leave mechanics in the fucking formula to be abused. That's why your community kind of dies because when you have mechanics that can be easily abused by everybody. You get the fucking people that actually want to have an enjoyable experience. They bounce. And they go to the next game. And they go back to Call of Duty. Or they go play a Uncharted or some shit. So hopefully the single player for Crisis 3 fucking rocks. Because you know Crisis 2, Crytek Cry developers, whatever, they would like to lie about their game. So I'm like, that's the best looking game on console. I don't know what the fuck it was. That game was... The AI in Crisis 2 was half ass. The multiplayer was disastrous because of the cloaking. And graphically, no. Okay, you can't take a bunch of objects, make them one solid object, and, and give it really glossy, give it a glossy appearance and say it's good graphics. No, because I see through that. Uh, you know, real gamers can know, they, real gamers, we know the tricks of the trade and what developers do to make a game look good. You can make everything in the world look like one object and just give it like a glossy appearance. And and that's exactly what they fucking did in Gratis too. So I'm playing the game, I'm like, best looking game on console? No. Negative. That game looked nowhere as good as Killzone 2, 3, Uncharted 2, 3, Gears of War, Halo. No, Crisis 2 did not look like I'm powered any of those fucking games. So uh, hopefully Crisis 3 delivers. And last but not least, I want to talk about a possible, holy shit, Resident Evil reboot. I am a tremendous Resident Evil fan. And when I reviewed Resident Evil 6, I was honest. I spoke the truth. Capcom really dropped the ball at Resident Evil 6. I, it was basically, it was just the most fucking outrageous game ever. It was like retarded. It was not in any shape, way, or form a bad game. It wasn't bad. It just was too much in one game. Like, since when the fuck do we drive snowmobiles in Resident Evil? Okay, and it was just, they tried to make the game just way too Hollywood, okay, and I enjoyed it, and I loved the game, but at the same time, I may have loved it, but that's the love I have for the for franchise, but as a customer, and as a gamer, I was like, alright, son, this fucking game, why is there so much go shit going on in this game? So, possibly, what might happen Capcom's discussing it. It's up in the air. A reboot to the franchise. I, I wouldn't mind it at all if if they do it right. I liked the last the last game that got rebooted was Devil May Cry. Okay? And it, it, it took a, a franchise that lacked direction and soul. And turn it into a crazy punk rock experience. And I fucking loved it. But I really hope that if they choose to reboot the franchise of Resident Evil. That they either give it back to the fucking creator. Who had no making at all in Resident Evil 5 and 6. He had nothing to do with 5 and 6. Okay? Nothing to do with 5 and 6. You know, apparently... Uh, Resident Evil 5, the creator of the Resident Evil franchise didn't play Resident Evil 5 until like 2-3 years after it came out because he's so upset of what they're doing to his franchise. I liked Resident Evil 4 and 5, but I mean, whatever. Um, if they reboot it, please do it right, okay? I don't care if you continue this action style direction that Resident Evil 4 started. I don't care if you st keep it that. But do not turn into another fucking Hollywood fucking movie like Resident Evil 6 was. Like, you know, like Resident Evil 4 was great because it concentrated on its third-person experience. 
Resident Evil 5 capitalized on a third person experience with co-op and black people. And then Resident Evil 6 was just like it's like, it's like everything. It was like 20 games in one. I was like, okay. You know, fuck. So that's pretty much it. Long video. Um, rant. Discuss. Talk shit. Whatever. Uh, tell me what you guys think. As always, you know, let's look out for future videos. Tell me what you guys want me to do videos about and shit. Talk about, you know, tell me the games you want me to talk about and shit. And uh, catch you guys next video. And peace.